why SLAs, service level agreements, don't really matter. I was recently talking to a VP of engineering about service level agreements, and he was making a large portion of the decision about what platform he was going to run based on its service level agreement. A service level agreement is the agreement between the company that is providing the service and the company that's receiving the service about what the uptime numbers will look like. While uptime is an important number, having it written into the service level agreement rarely matters. The biggest thing that happens with the service level agreement is that it's a re way to exit a long-term contract more than it is anything else. When you sign up with a company and they agree to provide you a service, having them say this service will be available with four nines of reliability is great, but if all you get when they only provide one nine of reliability is a refund, that doesn't really help you with building a product around it. For example, if you were to host with an unknown hosting company that promised you 100% uptime, but only delivered 90% uptime, they were down 10% of the time, and their service level agreement said that they would refund you for any hours of downtime. If you were going to pay, to make the math very easy, $30 a month for hosting, you would get $3 back at the end of the month, but your website would have been down three days out of 30. From a revenue standpoint, this is going to hurt you a lot more than the cost of the hosting, and from an image and relationship with your customer's point of view, it's going to look very bad. So it isn't really about whether or not they promise a certain level of service, but whether they can deliver that service. A good service level agreement isn't actually about the uptime as much as it is about the quality of service. Many of the service level agreements that I have written and worked with talk about percentage of requests, service, whatever, that will be delivered at this rate or this standard. So it might be a bandwidth deal for, with a, com, a content delivery network, a CDN, where I would say, I expect that 35% of requests will be served from your edge cache and be delivered at a latency no greater than X. And 30% of them will be from your near cache and will be served at a latency of this. And 30% will be misses and will hit my servers and you aren't responsible for a quality of service level on those. In those types of scenarios, you're building in not just what is the service going to guarantee to provide, but what is your expectation of the service. In doing so, you don't get trapped in a long-term contract that you have to honor when the service isn't meeting your needs. You're really saying, I need this service level, and if you don't provide it, I'm going to cancel. And when I cancel, you can't hold me to this contract for the next three years, regardless of the fact that we signed a three-year contract. And that's where an SLA really comes into play. People who talk to me about picking between Azure, EC2, and Google App Engine often cite the different service level agreements of the three platforms. But the truth is you're basically on a month-to-month -month contract with those guys anyway, and you're paying for the usage. So it isn't like if they don't meet their service level that there's any real repercussions for them or any advantage to you. If it's not working, you can bolt. And because of that, it isn't the same kind of agreement that we used to sign five years ago about hosting and bandwidth where you were negotiating with a co-location co co facility or with a content delivery network in order to make sure that you were going to have good pricing for a long period of time. Instead, you're on a month-to-month, -month, pay-as-you-go kind of world, and what really matters is what the realized uptime is and how well you can build, pla uh, build your product on that platform.